Welcome back to the Final Whistle Podcast. I am your host today, Ryan, and I'm joined today by none other than Javier from Jamaica. What's up, bro? How you been? We are, we are here. We are here. I'm a bit depressed, but <laughs> I, I mean, uh, let's just get into the episode. Let's just get in regardless. Hey, uh, man. You can't be depressed, man. For, for what it's worth, I, I know, you know, we're in the thick of the title race. Uh, yeah, it yeah, sucks yeah. when we're depending on our rivals to do some of our work for us, but, you know... That's I mean, kind of like the catch twenty two is, it yeah, sucks. Yeah, they it, came it up does, short. It, it does. It does suck. And um, this entire season has been a roller coaster. Uh, it, it's now down to the final day. I, I don't know if this could be like a uh, twenty eleven with QPR and Man City and Man United and Sutherland. I, I don't know. I hope so. With that, we can win. I, I really don't. You know, it's the cra- I don't know. You know, it's a crazy thing, uh, you know, when you bring up that uh, Manchester uh, City uh, season with uh, QPR is that yeah. they won it with 89 points right, and yeah. we could potentially win it with 89 points given a specific scenario if City draws. Yeah, so that's there's true, that. That's true. That's true. But I just I don't see them join at all. It, it's uh, I just don't see it. I really do not. <laughs> it's so crazy. How long sport? I mean, in, in the last nine games, he scored. Sorry, in the last six games, he scored like nine goals or so, right? I think so. Yeah, it, it's. I don't know what, what it's, to do. It's weird because, like, with Holland, like, his scoring is. It, it just seems to come all at once, like, within a couple of games, right. and he'll go on a crazy dry spell. Right. Yeah, and, of yeah, course, yeah. he came up big today. Uh, speaking of which, let's let's get into it because it, it it is a big to- a talking point. It it was Spurs yeah, hosting true, Manchester true. City, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. all we needed was Spurs to hold City to a draw or if not win, and destiny right, comes yeah. into our favor. It, it's in our hands at that point, right? right. But with yeah. City wins, it puts them two points ahead. Right. What's yeah. your thoughts about that game? Uh my thoughts on that game. I was at work when it's happening, so I, I glimpsed a bit, and I, I saw until like half time it was still nil nil. So I'm saying that they could have been a bit of hope, but um, there's no hope. The way how Spurs played, they played like they're losers. I mean, Son missed a chance as well. So I'm like, he usually scores against City, but when it matters the most for them to get Champions League qualifications, he missed. So I'm like. Why y'all even play this match for? It's so it's so lame. It's so lame. Aston Villa got a chance to go to Europe at Europe right now, Champions League. So I'm like, they like they had no hope of winning that game. It seems, and it's it's. I can't even say it sucks. Cause I I don't like Spurs, but at the same time, it could have pushed us in 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 the right edging to win the league. So yeah. I, I don't want to say that it, there was no hope for you guys, or not for you guys, I'm sorry, for Spurs. Uh, the reason why yeah. is, yeah, they had Champions League football uh, still to fight for, you know. Yeah, right, they would have yeah. needed uh, help at the final day, but that's still there. And uh, with I think Aston Villa was facing away at Crystal Palace, and Spurs were hosting mm-hmm. at Sheffield, so that's something to go for. And it, uh, well, from the what the game looked like, Spurs definitely did play. They didn't go there, they didn't get rolled over and, you know, they actually yeah. put out a professional performance. Yeah, yeah. They, I guess it was City had more quality than them to, you know, get the edge over them, definitely. But uh, I, I was hoping more from that game, obviously, because I want to win the title. But um, things can change. Uh, you, you can never know. Uh, the last day, could, the last day, Sunday could be a game changer. You can never know. Uh, we came close to it last season. Heartbreaking that we, we lost it. But um, hopefully something happens. They, they end up. Um, this this game week, um, that I don't know. That's what will happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was it was a moment like a it was a crazy moment to where the Bruyne found Holland. It looked like I thought Spurs were going to collapse. Yeah. Then no, they continued yeah, into yeah, the game. Real, real. Yeah. And yeah. Son had that chance, man. It was that one chance by Son that I thought he would have yeah. scored. If it was against us, he would have scored. Right. Yeah, he would have scored. But no, he, you know, when or taking credit to him. Yeah, it's a good save. Uh, when it matters, it matters the most. They, they they don't they don't do nothing. To be honest, I realize. What against us? Oh, trust me, they will. They oh no, no, no. he would have scored if it was against us. Yeah, for he, sure. He would he would have scored. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Hmm. But listen, 
credit to City. They they went there. I think it was their first one in that stadium too. That was something that was going against them. Yeah, yeah. And, they always and, lose against Spurs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They always lose against not, Spurs. Yeah. And, yeah. Now, City are in great form going into the final day of the season. Eight games in a row they've won in the Reds, Prem. yeah. Uh-huh, um, uh-huh. And Arsenal, I believe, are up there, too, in terms of, uh, I think it's like yeah. five or six wins in a row since that Villa loss. I, I think so, yeah. Because um, from that time period, we have been in really good form. We haven't really lost a game, so, uh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, coming into the final day of the season, this is a scenario. So right okay. now it's Manchester City. They're sitting up top with eighty-eight points. Arsenal right. two points behind. Mm-hmm. If they tie to West Ham and Arsenal wins, Arsenal are champions because right. we have a better goal difference, right? Right. There's yeah. no way around mm-hmm. that. And of course, if City loses, we're still champions. But Arsenal needs to win right. to, to at least have a chance Ooh. at the title. Right. Yeah. So what? What's your predictions for both the City and the Arsenal game? Man, it's, it's so difficult to make a prediction. The reason why is because both teams are heading to win the Premier League. And I mean, obviously, I'm going to say that Arsenal would win, like, probably 3-0 against Everton. And I would say, like, Man City will lose or draw against um, with, um, with Sam, but I, it's so hard really to predict what this will be. I, I can't even tell what kind of, or what will happen. It's 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 very 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 tricky to say. Yeah. Listen, I've, the way I look at it, mm-hmm. City. Uh, like I remember, it was two seasons ago. City yeah. and Liverpool were f- fighting for the title, and then right, Aston yeah. Villa were up two zero against City, right? And yeah, at that yeah, point, yeah. Liverpool were winning the league. Because right, they were winning yeah. out their fixture. Yes, I remember and of course, that. I remember yeah. that. And then City yeah. turned it around in the second half. Right, yeah. Uh-huh. So, for what it's worth, there is there is a chance. Yeah, West Ham, they're probably on holiday. True. They're probably looking past it. They're going to, t- uh, to the Etihad. So, was, yeah. you know, they got nothing to play for at this got point. Nothing to play for, definitely. I mean, Neither do, does Everton. They have nothing yeah. to play for. And yeah, I wouldn't if you look at it mean from, anything. No. If you look at it from like a fixture point of view to like Sean Dyche versus Moyes, I think right. Sean Dyche is more likely to throw a wrench in it and to, to try to spoil our party versus Moyes that and West That is true. That is true. I think that it'll be nervy for us. I think we'll probably get out of there with maybe a 2-0 win versus, and I think City will probably win like 3-1 or 3-2 or something like that. I mean, it's, it's possible. It's possible. But I put everything in God's trust. <laughs> yeah. That's all we could do at this point is yeah. as long as we'd win our fixture, at least we could say, hey, we've done it all. And, and if you were base. to take, you know, 89 points at the end, of, uh, at the beginning of the season, you take that. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's hard to beat a team that has 115 charges. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Potentially can, potentially can win the league four times in a row. That's, that, that, that's really, really Listen. difficult if you look at it. Yeah. The 115 charges aside, right? Yeah, I get it. It is going to be a big talking point at some point in the future that might come down to yeah. hit them, you know, on their honors, whatever. Right. Yeah, on the sporting yeah. side yeah. of things, four leagues in a row, that's that's impressive. And the way it they've is. gone about doing it, it's impressive. Like, it's I'm, starting, I'm starting to think, like, is the Premier League the best league in the world? Still, because, I mean, like, four times in a row is ridiculous, right? Oh, we haven't seen it in a long while, right? Oh, you feel me? I um, mean, if you, if you look at things, every year there'd be a different Premier League champion. That's not the case now. It's not like in Bundesliga, you see Bayern winning from like 2011 up to now. Yeah. You know? I do see City faltering at some point. They can't. Keep, they won't do a Bayern Munich or a Juventus. They won't do uh, that. They won't lead uh, the league for 10 years, no. Yeah, um, every, every team that dominates the league, they always drop. You know, one or two seasons. Or, yeah, or, there, it's or a cycle. Long period of time. Yeah, it's a cycle. But knowing them is that they're always by established players each time. It's not like we beat it's the same Remo thing that they be doing. But mm, I, I don't know. I don't even know how long Pepe be staying there as well. So, Well, he's extended. He's staying there for, I think, another two or three more seasons. I think so, so he's yeah. going to be there for a bit. Yeah. 
And to be honest, I'd love to beat City with Pep there. Yeah, if I feel much better. I feel the victory feels it tastes sweeter when Pep actually will be will beat Pep. I really like that. Yeah, definitely. It felt satisfying when we beat them earlier in the season. Even though it was an ugly True. win at yeah. the Emirates, it was still a it was still uh, well deserved. A win is a win. I mean have a loss against the top six teams this season as well. We have a loss a game. I think we only drew four games, that's all, uh, against the top six. And I'm fine with that, as long as, as long as we don't lose. That's the thing. Mm. Now, another thing, on our, I want to go over a little bit of our season, especially towards the running. Right, uh, yeah. So, we're, well, I think we're at five draws, five losses. Uh, yeah. This, in this uh, 2024, right, in the Premier League, we've only tied once and we've only lost once. Right. And yet City are still ahead of us because of their fantastic run. You know, the mm. fun fact is their last loss in all mm. competitions was to Aston Villa back in December. Wow. This Aston Villa side is something to watch out for, too. Yeah. But, I, I, although I really do not like Unai Emery that much, I have to give him credit. Um, he, he's a really good manager with mid-table teams. He can turn them into something. Although Aston Villa had a decent team on paper still, and they still do. Um, even when they got uh, Leon Bailey as well, he's a really good thing I um, added in from Bayern Leverkusen. Uh, he really brought out the best in him this season, which is his best season in his career right now. So um, after giving credit when it's due, I always think about it that, like, what if he was still at Arsenal, how would it be? But it wasn't going his way, to be honest, so I can't even think about it anymore. What? I know the whole Emery thing, it kind of stunk up a little bit. That was more part of the players and the board not packing him. And yeah. at the end of it, because I remember, I think it was his second season in, Arsenal mm-hmm. went on this like crazy unbeaten run. I think it was like 22 games unbeaten. And then in that season, unbeaten. we were going right. to get Champions League too. We were on pace for it. And I think right, we ended yeah. up finishing fifth or something or sixth. Yeah, I think we yeah we lost to Brighton. I remember that game. We lost to Brighton when we stopped. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so, Unai Emery for what he is, you know, credit to him. Uh, I hope he does yeah, stay there. I hope great. his players doesn't get picked apart. Uh, so well, let's credit see. to him on that. Um, uh, but yeah. Yeah, for Unai Emery, man, I, you know, well played for him for securing Champions League football. Of mm. On our season, right? When yeah. we lost the 2-0 game to Aston Villa, did you felt that the title hope was, like, slipping away? F- honestly, Especially since it was going to City's hands at that point? No, honestly, I didn't, feel it, I didn't feel it was slipping away. The reason why there's still more games left to, um, to play. Although winning that game would have been crucial because they probably would be we most likely would have been in front of City right now as well. But there's still more games left to be played. Um, we just had to make the best out of it, and we did. But just that one game messes, messes up. And that proves to say that like when you're in a title race, you cannot mess up. You have to try and win not as much games as possible. You have to win every single game, especially when you play against Man City as well. Because they're not likely to lose points against teams like Austin Villa or, you know, the teams that we lost points against. If you're going to win those games, um, that's how you win the title. So, um, um, yeah, that's my opinion. No, you make a fair point. Uh, Now, me personally, I wouldn't want to blame it on that Aston Villa game. We had another game just prior to that in 2024, and it was against Manchester City, uh, where we drew 0-0 at the Etihad. Yeah. So Arteta's game plan, and you know what? I don't want to fault it too much on that, but you look at it in hindsight. Had he not tried to go for it and maybe mm-hmm. try to get three points out of it, right? Who's to say, you know, you know, to put mm-hmm. it in your own hands that way? What's a better way to do it than to go up to your own opponent and you know, giving him a right hook right into the face, right? Right. Yeah. That's one way to do it. Definitely. Definitely. Um. So, so instead of sharing the points with them. You got to look them. at it the way it's, hey, the best I way to, uh, if you want to beat your rivals, do it against them. Don't, 
depend right. on other teams to do it for so him. To me, I, I, I felt like he was kind of scared because he knew that when City is, when you're attacking City, like attacking... City's attacking. a better team. There's, that's, yeah, I'm not, I'm not are, arguing that. Yeah, they're way, they're way better at, at attacking. And I guess Arsenal is good at, at attacking. Arsenal is good at attacking, but not as good as Man City in certain, in certain ways, obviously. So I felt like he had to, you know, not really sit back, but he had to be defensively good in that game and defend majority of the game and try try to find little loopholes to try and attack definitely. But um, we we really didn't attack as much during those game, during that game, not much. Yeah, and I, I thought he the way he approached that game was like you said, it was a defensive mindset. Like, hey, let's sit back, absorb yeah. pressure, and yeah, try to break. The problem was they couldn't get the ball from City. City just kept it from them. But City right, also, yeah. they weren't taking too many chances themselves. They knew what was on the line here. Yeah, because, and then, yeah, because they know that if they open up, then Arsenal will find a way to go right through, that, um, through their defense. Um, Havertz was playing well that game as well, too, but uh, they didn't score. But um, they know Arsenal still had danger in them, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even in the first fixture when we faced them at the Emirates where we won 1-0, it was a deflected effort from yeah. Martinelli that went in. Because it right, looked like right, it was going to yeah. be another 0-0 game anyways. Right, but yeah, I remember. Yeah. Favor, you know, favor fortunes the bold here. And, you know, credit to Arsenal for digging out the win in the first game. Yep, yep, yep. Listen, hmm. the sport, you know, the sport is fickle like that, right? To where sometimes yeah, you need luck yeah. on your side. Yeah, you really need a lot of luck, especially when you're in competitions with knockouts. You need a lot of luck, a lot of luck, and obviously the quality is a major deciding factor in those games as well. For for Man City, uh, for the past few seasons, it's, it's their quality and their their luck because if they're playing certain games, they could be having a bad game somehow, and um. Out of nowhere, they scored like three, four goals within like the second half, going down to the to the wire. So I mean, it's just luck and quality. People say that um, luck and quality is it a thing, but trust me, it is a thing. <laughs> you know, it is a thing. Yeah. No, you said it right there. Even like let's say in City's run, right? I'm not saying that they're lucky to win all their games. No, they're yeah, blowing teams out yeah. by four zero, five zero. Yeah, they're doing yeah, their job. Yeah. Yeah, that's a quality right there. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is the difference between us and City. We're right. It's close, but they just got that edge to them. Not only right. that, they yeah. have that experience of winning too. Yeah. Their, their entire squad is fully experienced. Um, I like Arsenal. It's, it's, they're, they're still, I can't even say that they're still young because, I mean, they have experience right now, but they don't have experience in terms of winning a title or anything like that. But that comes with time. They learn their faults on uh, during each game, uh, and they grow into the the league, um, the league and the, the competition is much better to actually win something. It's the same with the Champions League. None of our players have been in the Champions League, other than Odegaard was probably on the bench for Real Madrid. But like, um, and Kevin Havertz won, Georgina won, Partey has been in it, but a majority of them has never been in it. And, I do it as far to the quarterfinals. I, I still think we could have beat, beaten Byron, but um, Byron just had the, the, the edge over, over us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And listen, whatever the result is on Sunday, win or lose, we go again next season and we do it well, even better. Right, go again next season. Just now we have to recruit some, some players, like a left back, a, a, a midfielder, a striker, potentially. It looks like we're looking for a striker right now. Um, to you know, be that leader player coming off the bench, or, or honestly, I don't want no bench players. I need some starters in the team. I need starters who can displace Hubbard, who can displace Saka. That's what we need right now. Uh, squad they ain't gonna prove it right now. We need, we need some starters who are just like, yo, I want to play right now. Yeah, he if he's not scoring, I will. I want to play and I will score. That's the mentality that we need in the team. You know. That's what gets you to win a title, definitely. Yeah. You, you make a good point there on trying to, re, let's say, not rebuild our squad, but uh, no, reinforcements, right? Reinforcements. I think it would be the right. Reinforcements, yeah. 
definitely. Um, because I don't see the point in spending what what is it like 50, 60 million for a decent player just for them to sit on the bench. No, right, I think they right, yeah. do need to strengthen our first eleven. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and you said yourself a mid a center midfielder. I to me, I think it's probably the most important position that we reinforce. Not necessarily. Really I don't think is. we need a striker right away. Yeah, because we don't have a problem scoring. Because they have scored one, like, one of the most goals this season, or the most goals this season. They're the highest on goal difference right now. Yeah. Um, we just need to, we just need some options that can change the game completely. That let us let us be in control. You know, in most games we're we're losing control. We're 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 um we're not being aware of what's going on in the game. Players are losing concentration. Uh, they're sitting back as well, taking in pressure that allows them to make mistakes. And that, that has always been a thing. And we need we need players who can, you know, are that can something in, you know, they control the tempo. They can move the ball where it's supposed to go. Uh they move it to this player, they they command certain um cer- certain um game styles from certain players as well. Like you need to run, you need to run into spaces, you need to go between the spaces as well. Um, I, you know, you understand. We need we need some players like that right now as well. And Shaka was a prime example of that. Shaka was really vocal. Shaka would say, "Hey, like you gotta make a run. You gotta go in between the players. Uh, you gotta move faster with the ball." Shaka was like that. Um, we we missed that, but uh, it, it it is something that we have to deal with. We have to move on. You know, can't use it as an excuse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, well said. And you, listen, credit to Shaka. Shout out to him for winning the the Bundesliga with Bayer Leverkusen. As of Definitely. right now, they're they're undefeated, and I hope they win it undefeated. I hope they finish the yeah, season undefeated. Yeah. Credit to them. I, I see That's, that the yeah, I see that the um the German Board of Football DFB is, is planning to like see if they actually should get like a golden um golden trophy <laughs> right now because I think the next ooh, game that would is, that would be something. Yeah, that would be something, yeah. And Shaka, Shaka hasn't lost a game since 2023 when we won against um, Nottingham Forest, which is a really good record for hey. him. Yeah. That's, that's a crazy stat. I, I think another stat was like that for Rodri of Man City. I don't think yeah. they are, they're unbeaten with him. Or, no, no, they haven't lost with him yeah, in the side. Him. Yeah. That is crazy, man. In like 40 something really matches. Crazy. It's really crazy. Yeah. It's really crazy. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Some uh, some uh, some of my friends were saying, "Hey, we got to poison um f- uh, give food poisoning to Holland." It's like, "No, you do it to <laughs> Rodri and then see if City can win." And... <laughs> yeah. You know, you know what I forgot to ask you is that um what do you think about Raya coming into the team right now? And Ramsey is like Ramsey is extra the team right now in certain ways. Do you think Ramsey will leave or would he stay and want to fight for his place next season? Okay. Uh so let me let me start on the Raya. Um when he first mm-hmm. came in, you know, mm-hmm. I was like almost every like every Arsenal fan. Why uh, why is he displacing Ramsdale so soon? I don't think Ramsdale did much to you know to lose his okay. spot. Okay. But you also look at it to cuz Raya has also made mistakes and I think he's, uh yeah, yeah, he's yeah, made yeah. um a yeah. recent mistake against Spurs luckily we didn't lose that one or lose points right. in that one, right? We won right. Yeah. we won that game. Mm-hmm. There was a couple other ones where he also made mistakes as well, and that's fine. Okay, right? I understand. As long understood. as you put that behind you and you continue playing. Okay. He's been Fair a great enough. goalie this year. He's won the Golden Glove. Most clean, I think it was what fifteen or sixteen clean sheets, something like that. You know, yeah. credit to mm-hmm. him. Right. Yeah. In this first season, especially with all that goalkeeper uh, controversy, and he's missed right. the first three games of the season and the two against Brentford. So that's credit to him. Like I said, mm-hmm. right. um, Ramsdale. It sucks, you know. It's 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 a sport. Yeah, it's competition. Yeah. You're you're fighting against your own teammates for uh you know for, uh, for you know for for, a, for a space yeah, for space to play right. And there's yeah. only one goalkeeper, and that's how the sport. It's cutthroat, you know. Steel sharpens steel, and right, if yeah. that's what made Raya better, like I said, credit to him. Right, uh, yeah, personally, yeah. Ramsdale, I think he's too good to be on the bench. I that's think he does need to move on to another club. If he wants, yeah. uh, he I think he got called up to the Euros, and that's because of a lack of goalies. I think because of injuries to like Nick Pope. Oh, uh, okay, I see. I, I see. think quality too. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. But if I were if I were him, I would look to play if he wants to play regular football because I don't think he's going to look to start over Ryan. I think Arteta's already made that decision, and yeah, he it, sees it, it to where he's so. not a ball player with his feet. Right, Which he, yeah. I, I didn't think that was much of an issue last season, right? It wasn't much of an issue, really. It wasn't, and I mean, I remember when Arteta first came to Arsenal, he actually wanted Raya at first. I remember. Yeah. But I think. Brentford wasn't. I think Brentford didn't want to let him go to Arsenal, so I I remember that that transfer saga a bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's crazy how like a couple of seasons later they let him leave on loan. Yeah, there's a there's a buyout clause of thirty million, a supposedly thirty million. I don't know what the fuck. Yeah, the yeah, is. It, yeah. And we bought we bought him already. So um, it's gonna be. Oh, so it it is a done deal. Yeah, it's a done deal, basically. Yeah. Okay, all right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. l- listen, it's, Ryan's not a bad deal. I think he's a great goalie. And I, yeah. I do miss, especially the the shenanigans that Ramsdale will do. I remember in that Spurs game uh, where, <laughs> where that one fan came up to confront him. Uh, that, that's <laughs> yeah, what I love yeah, about yeah. Ramsdale, the shithousery. Right, yeah, I agree, I agree, I agree. It's some good times. So, it's some good times. If Ramsdale yeah. does move on, Best of luck to him. You know, I think he'll he'll always be a yeah. winner. That's that's for sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, another we got also bring it up Havertz, bro. Were you one of those when uh, when he Boy, first got signed Havertz. in? You were scratching your head, like, what is Arteta doing? Why um, are we spending sixty million on him? Honestly, when when he came, I was like, hmm. This is really interesting because I was like, it's interesting and frustrating at the same time because why we buying players from Chelsea? Uh, uh, I don't know why we keep doing that. Secondly, we needed a proven... There are a feeder club, that's why. <laughs> Apparently. Secondly, we needed a, a, a striker, a proven striker. We got like a hybrid midfield, false nine striker, you feel me? Um, the first few games, it was Arsenal was not playing so well in those first few games um, in in the season, but he could you could see something from Havertz like he was really low on confidence, really low, and he was still adapting to. The he looked like he was still at Chelsea. Days. Yeah, 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 totally. And as the games go by, he was getting more confidence. Um, his movement was much better. Uh. The movement in space was much better, I should say. Uh, I should actually say, uh, his him striking the ball was much better as well because he's striking it like, like he had no no, no power in his feet, and it, it over the time things got much better. He started to get some assists, um, making some plays as well to some players. He was moving into spaces that that um people like Trussard or Saka could have exploited as well uh, in between the lines and. He was, he was, he was really playing well. And from like, from March all the way down to actually now, he has put in some really good performances, you know. So, uh, he, he proved to be a really good change to change to the, to the side, actually. He wasn't bad. No, I, I mean, it's funny because like, at first, I was one of those that was like, Again, I was against the signing of it. You know, right, it's like another yeah. Chelsea player. It's a stink up the joint. Yeah, we didn't yeah, need yeah. those. Um, mm-hmm. Then I was like, you know what? He's an Arsenal player. We got to back him. And definitely, I was optimistic. Definitely. I bet one of my friends that a hundred dollars that he wouldn't score more than ten. Uh, that he would score more than ten. Uh, more than ten Premier League goals in the season, right? <laughs> right. Then yeah. come the Manchester United game. I think he was already. I think he had started almost every game since then, right? And I think he I missed think two so, yeah. opportunities to score. And then I was like, you know what? I cashed out on my bet with my friend for $80. Mm-hmm. A, couple, a couple weeks ago, Premier, uh, he scores 10 goals. And I think it was against Chelsea, too. He scores his 10th goal on. Right, yeah. Which, mm-hmm. which is ironic because uh, the friend uh, yeah. that I bet, he's a Chelsea fan. I like when he celebrated that game, too. Yeah, he celebrated it, too. And God, God bless him for that. And <laughs> let's see. I'm $180 down on this bet. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah, I gave yeah, up yeah. on it. You know, and it's crazy because mm. Kai Havertz, he's at 13 goals right now. Right, and he, right. And he 
it was a bit of a stinker the way he started the season, but like yeah, it looks he like was, he just he really fits. Was. He he ousted Jesus out of a starting spot. Right, yeah. And I don't see I don't see like a starting because like let's say if we were to get another striker, right? Right. Where are you gonna put Kai Havertz? He doesn't work in midfield. He does not work in midfield. We could already see that. Left wing, Trussard mm-hmm. kind of nailed down that spot. Yeah, he Martinelli needs to step, step up for something soon. <laughs> So it's like, because mm. I, I, uh, my next question to you is going to be is, how mm. big of a, is the striker issue for us when we have Gabriel Jesus as a backup? Because I don't think Gabriel Jesus is leaving we, unless we someone have, comes in with some money. Yeah, he's not leaving. Yeah, unless somebody comes in with some money. Um, we have no problem scoring. Uh, our pro- problem is scoring enough goals. Our problem is, our problem is, is to... Get the ball in the net when it matters in these games that we always always draw, draw or lose for some reason. Those games is when it really matters. Uh, if you get what I, if you get what I mean, um, we yeah. need a game changer who can, when when he's on the field, he sparks something. He can get a goal or an assist. Basically, Alexis Sanchez who can make a goal or assist out of nothing. That's what we need right now. Most teams have a game changer right now. For example, Real Madrid, when they have Rodrigo, when he comes on in that game against, um, I think it was Man City, where he got like a brace, I think. That's what we need right yeah. now. That's what we need. We need that quality. You know, Martinelli could be like that, but, but you know, you got the pace, you got the aggression going forward, you can cut in and score, but um, he's really low on confidence, it seems. It was like that last season, I, I though, think he had a but, bit yeah. of an injury, and then since then he hasn't been the same since. And then Trossard ah, okay, kind of took over. Okay. It's like, yeah, he, he's yeah. not getting to run the games because you're not going to tell Trossard to take uh, to take a sit on the bench. Right. Trossard's yeah, deserving because he's scoring in almost every match now. That is true. That is true. That is true. He came up big in the Champions League, and I'm going to touch up a little bit more on the Champions League in just a bit. But okay. uh, it's okay. like, so. If we were to get a striker, like I said, you need to get rid of Gabriel Jesus. We're not going to have three, you know, premium pay players sitting up top if we're only starting one of them, maybe two, right? That, that, is, that um, is true, no doubt. So it, I know a lot of, like, Arsenal fans, they'll beg the questions like, oh, there's Ali Watkins. I, I took, I'm a fan of Ali. I'm a big fan of Ali. Uh, yeah, yeah, Ivan yeah. Tony was the big name prior to this, mm, but it, that name died down because uh, he ain't scoring right now. Mm-mm. He's not even going to the Euros. That's how bad his nah, form is. Nah, nah, nah. I ain't want that. I ain't want that at all. Nah. No. And, and you do hear of other names, too. Um, Let's see. From the Premier League, uh, there was one more name that escaped, uh, escapes my mind. Uh, oh, uh, Isaac from Newcastle. But are Newcastle yes. going to get rid of him? Yes. No. They spent what? $80 million. What would we have to spend to get uh, Isaac on our team? That's true. That's true. We got to break the bank somewhere for him. Somewhere. Then if you yeah. look outside, it's the guy from Sporting. He's a big guy. Yeah, Victor. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he's really good. You know, credit to him for scoring. But again, it's the Portuguese league. Like Darwin Nunes did it. Ha! Um, true, 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 true. I'm not. I'm not saying Darwin Nunes is bad. I'm. What I'm saying is, it's a different level. True. So, if we're gonna. If we are going to choose our next striker, it has to be well planned out by Arteta. Definitely. It has to. They have to come into this team rolling, ready to go. Rolling. And there's only one other player I can yeah. think of that you know that could do that. Cool. He's big. Uh, not big, but French guy. Uh, he's leaving the capital of uh, ah. you know, a Francais. He hasn't declared yeah. where he's going just yet. To me, I think he's I, going I don't to think Real it's Madrid. happening, but I think he's going to Real Madrid. Yeah, and, yeah, the writing's on that one. Who else can afford his salary? <sighs> Not much teams other than City, and yeah, I can afford him right now. So definitely there. To me, I think he should come to Arsenal and take the number fourteen of any Enketia. And he he can have whatever he, number he wants. He can have any number he wants. Do you think he would definitely. be worth it? The drama. Um. <sighs> It's not working. But with Arteta, a man who's on discipline and structure. He, he told really... Obama Yang to take a hike after his whole issue. Yeah, he's not he's afraid like... to go to... He, he wasn't afraid in credit to him for doing that because most managers yeah, lose yeah, their jobs. Yeah. 
Yeah, true. He, he he's like, yo, you can get out. When I watch the Amazon documentary, he's like, our boy is no longer a captain. Everybody was like, what? and then <laughs> forced him to train by himself. The guy yeah, was yeah, exiled. Yeah. That's how cutthroat Arteta was, and credit to him for that too, man. Yeah, because that's yeah. guess what? That's where he because of what he did there. And I love the bombing. I have his name. Uh, uh, I have a, uh, his name on a jersey. Yeah, I fucking love the guy. Yeah. I thought he was really good, and his goal yeah. return was amazing. Definitely, but he would, he would be cooking. He would be cooking in this team right now. You in think his so? Prime. In his prime, in his prime, when he's scoring the goals for us. Because he he's a very good transition yeah. player. Yeah. But he's not... He doesn't do the things that, like, Kai Havertz does or... The link like, a Mart- like, the tracking defending. back. He, it, that's not his yeah. forte. Yeah, the link up the tracking back. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, But I'll tell the, you what. He would force a lot of, you know, in-behind balls, right? You know, he yeah. would definitely get played in a lot on those. Yeah, you got to send the ball to him and he will find the goal. Yeah, definitely. That's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. So... You know, on the talk of so we mentioned the midfielder, right? And I think we do need another midfielder as well. Mm-hmm. And I think it's going to have to be kind of not necessarily like a general like how Rice has been. I don't think we're going to get another Rice. Rice is going to be like one oh, of, but one of a kind. Yeah, Rice is something else, man, and yeah. he'll get his plotted soon. But right, yeah. I think we need maybe someone of a uh, Thomas Partey ilk, but maybe we really do. We really do. The, the or dress. do you think Thomas Partey should stay? He can stay, actually. He has the experience. He should definitely stay. Uh, but then the, the question is, it's like, is it worth for him staying if he's injured, if he's there half the time? Because every true. season he's been injured and he's been missing a handful that, of games. That, that is true. That's the only don't fall about him. But when he's not injured, he plays really well. And we really do not want to lose that his, his experience and his quality. The only downfall is that you get injured easily. Um, that's something that Arteta will have to think around and see who best can replace him with the quality that we will need in the midfield. Because Partey can find those, those, those splitting passes, the interceptions he will know before the ball is even passed to a player. He knows those things by, by heart, definitely, through experience. So it's going to take a while to actually find somebody who can match that type of quality. Yeah. And uh, you also mentioned another position as well, left back. Mm-hmm. I just, I'm going to have to back. disagree with you. I don't think we need another left back. Uh, if, I mean, Kieran Tierney, wherever he is. Uh, no, I don't think... As much as I love Tierney, Arteta, he, I think it's the same be, issue with Arteta. Leaving. I don't think he wants he him. He'd be leaving. Yeah, he'd be leaving. And we have Timber right now. Tommy Yasu, That's the reason why like, I think we need another left back. Un- yeah. Unless another major injury happens, which we weren't planning for. Right. You know, yeah. no one really plans but for I, I someone think, to tear their ACL. I think we can buy another midfield. I'm sorry, I think we can buy another left back. And uh, Zinchenko will just have to go somewhere. Do you have to go somewhere? I don't know. I forgot yeah. we have Kivir. I forgot we have him. We have Kivir, but yeah. guess what? Tamiyasu's been pulling in a shift there. He's He hasn't looked yeah. that, that much out of place there. Yeah, but I feel like you should stick to right back, though. Because although we have Ben White, and Ben White never gets injured. Uh, I still think hey, Tamiyasu Ben White isn't losing his too. spot. He's he, yeah, as, for real, for real. As often as he, he does get beat a little bit sometimes by you know um, by wingers on the outside. That's right. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. still he's still a solid defender. He's still solid. Yeah. But uh, we can use another left back, but Zinchenko will just have to go somewhere else. I don't know where, but somewhere else. You know what's crazy with Zinchenko, right? Yeah. As you always hear that he, you know, for Ukraine, he plays in the midfield, right? And even mm-hmm. when we're playing, he transitions into the midfield. I would have right. thought Arteta would have played him more into the midfield this season, too. Just, like, either starting or coming off the bench. That hasn't been the case. He could probably play, play part his role. Maybe. He's really, his passing is really good. His defending 
well, he's defending in left back. He's not good, but probably in your midfield when he's given the opportunity, he could defend much better in, in, in that role. Or you can have Rice with the defending and make Dinchenko play in front of in front of um um, um Rice. But the thing okay. is though is that Rice plays really good when going forward as well. So it's he's mo- he's more of a physical threat and yeah and uh, he. Zinchenko is more of a facil- facilitator, similar to right. Jorginho. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's gonna take some thinking and tactical awareness and and, and thought for Arteta. Yeah. And then I I got two other players I want to get off my chest here. Yeah. Emil Smith Rowe and oh, Fabio Vieira. Emil Smith Rowe. ESR ten. At the moment, I, I you know uh, he doesn't deserve that number ten, man. He, boy, is harsh on him, but he 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 keeps getting injured right now, and it's not pretty. We need an active, we need an active player like him right now. We really do. We really, really, really do. And I'm scared to write him off because I don't want him to leave. And then he just turns out to be like one of the best Englishmen ever out of nowhere. <laughs> you understand? But, well, it um, tends to happen with a lot of Arsenal players that leave. True. You look at Robin Van Persie, you look at Samir Nasri, you look true, at Cesc Fabregas. Um, I don't how, think he's going to turn out to that kind of ilk, but go ahead. Nah. But if you remember how he was for us a long time ago, you know, scoring some goals, some late goals as well, um, coming, in, coming in into the, the edge of the box and scoring. I still think he has something to give. I say yeah. we give him a next chance. I know people are tired of giving academy players a next chance each time. But Smith Rose still has something, something cool to offer. And I still think he has it in him that he can, you know, play that role again. Definitely. Yeah. Fabio Vera. Yeah. Um, hmm. Listen, I know they've both been hampered by injuries, right? And it's, like, tough right, yeah. to break into our team where, like, Odegaard's been fantastic. You're not displacing Odegaard. Yeah, and then same he, thing with Rice. It's like, he, you can't displace Rice either. Right, yeah. I still think Vera has something to offer as well. Uh, definitely. The injury set him back, but without injuries in a time, he was really good. Uh, he was a really good sense of that we um, actually needed in most games that could, you know, uh, find some good passes as well. He was really good with that. So I would, I would say give them next season. If they don't improve until January, then you sell them. Best thing okay. to do. Best thing to do. Yeah. Sell them and recruit. Yeah. Well, you, you would be more to selling Fabio Vieira over Smith Rowe then, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm, yeah. The, the London born and bred, you know, you keep those around. <laughs> London born and bred, might as well, might as well. And I want to touch upon uh, Declan Rice. Man. Yeah. He... There's rumors out there that we, we only paid half of what Prob- it's worth. Right? Probably, probably, because he's a fantastic player. Uh, he really changed the dynamics of the midfield this season for us. And um, I'm happy that he's a player like him. He has really grown a lot. Um, watching him watching him at West Ham, although he's older than me, watching him at West Ham when he was a, 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 you know, a teenager growing up. So, like, no, he has changed a whole lot. It's really good. It's really good. He's, he, he, he just knows what to do. I don't know how to explain it, but he just knows yeah. how to move the ball. Not as good as Parker. He knows how to read the game. But he knows how to read the game. He can go forward with the, with the ball as well. I see sometimes when he's just running through the opponent midfield and drag the ball up. That, that is really good as well. I really appreciate that from him. And it doesn't look like he can move, but he can move. He no, can no, move the ball. He... Yeah. As much as there is like that physical nature to his game, there's yeah. also you know he has it up here in his head too. He right. knows how to yeah. read the game. 
Yeah. He can he pops up with goal he's popped up with some game winners for us as well. He has right. seven goals yeah. already this mm. season for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, mm. That's how important he's been. And not only that, when at, for, at West Ham he was playing in that center of the midfield, you know, that anchor position. Right. And he did yeah. start out like that for us too, but he also mm. transition uh, not transition, but he's in that Jaka position, that number 8 position. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, he was on the other side of the pivot attacking um, you know, uh, as much as Odegaard supported on the right hand side, he would be on the left hand side. Right, definitely, yeah. And not only that, he in, um, he interlinks with the other players just as well. He does. The guy does. has been. I don't. I think maybe one game, and it's not that he put a foot wrong, mm-hmm. it's just that he wasn't at that you know ten out of ten bet, right? Right. Yeah. Can probably only yeah. think of maybe one game. Probably one. And and it was against West Ham too. Yeah. Then again, I am. So, then again, what David Moy said that he he will really push a player to them, the captain as well, and losing him, you can see that West Ham um entire you know if defensive ways where they play is it, it has gone down a bit, so it that shows how important Rice was, yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that goes into our players, so. I want mm-hmm. to talk about the Champions League. It okay. was our return to the, you know, I think it's what, six or seven years since we seven, last been there? Seven years, yeah. Seven mm-hmm. years. Wow, mm-hmm. what a wait. Mm-hmm. How old were um, you? Uh, how old were you when the last time they were in the Champions League? Seven years. Seven years was how much years ago? Seven. Uh, so, uh, 2016, right? Yeah, twenty six. No, twenty. Yeah, twenty sixteen. I think the last time went. It was when Wenger yeah. was still in. Yeah, so 20, 2016, 17, Yeah, yeah. I was seventeen. I was seventeen. Yeah, I was seventeen. That's cr- it's crazy. How, like how much, how much all that time passed. Yeah, you know, it we is, deal with it is. Una yeah, Emery. We've had our luck. We had our chances to win the Europa League. You know, I think we. Came, you know, we came to one final once, and then there was the quarter f- or the semi final that we Bapu. lost as well with Wenger. That pool gives me nightmares, man. I don't like that. Yeah, it, well, it, it, it's even worse because it was in the hands of Chelsea. That's Chelsea, yeah. And yeah, are they qualified for the Champions League too? <laughs> so, but my God, but our first time being back know, after so many years. Yeah, and then we get drawn into a group with PSV, Lons, and Sevilla. Yeah. You know, Honestly, besides the, uh, the loss against Lons away, yeah. you know, show up and kind of take over that group with relative ease, right? Honestly, I am happy that we have... I'm happy that we perform in the Champions League. It could be much better, but these players, it is their first time Ever in the Champions League, and I'm still proud of them. How far they have went, um, Bayern, no matter how bad they were, I said it to Javon as well. Is that that um, but you see that we can beat Bayern. I'm, I was saying that Bayern has a history of beating Champions League for many years. The players as well, they have been in the competition. They know how to edge over over teams as well. The manager is way experienced and. They know how to get the job done. You understand? The last of Madrid wasn't that bad. So, I mean, like, they just know what to do. It doesn't matter how bad they are in, the, in their league, in the Bundesliga, in the Champions League. They know what to do. Dortmund is fifth in the league. And they're in the, in the finals right now as well. So, I mean, pfft. come on. But still, I am happy with how the squad has played. Uh, the players try their best, and they just have to keep trying each time. We're in the Champions League again this season. They learn from what 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 took place um this season, and I'm sure that they improve and we can wait one day. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, when we the first game uh the knockouts against Porto, yeah, it was a one zero loss, right? Yeah, and it was a it, it was a last minute. Golasso from uh, I think it was Galeno that scored that one, mm. but it was one where we could have just uh, left there with a zero zero game because Martinelli gives the ball away. It's right, you know, trying yeah. to look for. Hey, listen, 
Mm. That, that comes with experience. We end up winning on penalties and the return right. leg. Right. Then against Bayern Munich, bro, against Bayern mm. Munich, this was like the worst Bayern Munich in God knows how long. Right. Yeah. This was a. Ch- I thought I thought we should have beat them. Right. I, in the first I leg, thought... I thought we played good, mm-hmm. but we had those mistakes. Yeah, and, two and mistakes goes, that killed it, us. It goes again with. I mean, of course they're professional footballers, but they're still young to the competition. Um, yeah, they, 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 we had home advantage, but Bayern is a top European side still. You understand? Six it's still Bayern Munich. League. That name still carries. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You would imagine that they would have been favorites, of course. So I mean, that goes to show. Do not underestimate a team no matter who are or they are in the league. Yeah. But listen, credit to Bayern for beating us. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was like it was like a narrow margin game. It's not like we got outplayed by Bayern. It was yeah, it was a Champions true. League that's tie. True. It was it it was one of those. It was a cagey match. And yeah. They ended up winning. Eventually, they ended up losing. They were in within a. Sh- they were so close to the final, dude. True. So true. close. Damn. That, that's the man, player. how Real Madrid yeah. manages to pull these games out of their ass. Boy. I don't I don't even know. Not only that, they get Mbappe, Endrick is going in. I don't this team is not Yeah, done. that means they cannot complain about nothing anymore. They cannot complain about money. They cannot come they cannot complain about Super League. They cannot. They have everything right now. Everything. Every team would dream to have that the team that they have right now. I understand. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there's always next year for the Champions League. Um, uh, I did want to yeah. get your opinion though on the Champions mm-hmm. League, the new format, right? Thirty six teams. So right? it's gonna be a combined league type fixture. We're not playing like it's not a round robin where we're playing everyone. So right, it's only yeah. like a. Sol- I think it's like ten games. Yeah. 10 How games, do you feel about yeah. that? Um. Champions League is always changing for the past few years. I've been watching it. Um, this it'd be interesting to watch. I like the concept in a bit, but I, I really miss those games where like the knockout with the away goals was was a thing that was really fun though. Even the like really, you preferred the away but, goals. Um, yeah, it was actually fun. The teams would actually try harder to win games more more while to be honest. But, I thought um, it, depending on the teams like those Jose Mourinho's and uh, the Simeone's, yeah, yeah, I thought yeah, they yeah, took yeah. advantage of the one the away goals, man. Yeah, yeah, they did. They they, not did. just them; I, the other managers did too. But like, yeah. I feel like the mm-hmm. knockouts have been really good without the away goals. I yeah yeah they are still good. They they still good totally. But this new format, I I, I like it in a way. And I'm looking for this is just the group stage, and then the knockout is more of right, like uh, yeah. I, I don't think it's gonna be, I, think, I don't know if it's seeded. I don't think so. I can't remember, I would have to read more on it. Well, I'm looking forward to the change. Um, it, it sounds interesting, and we'll just, just have to see what what it's like next year. Yeah, mm-hmm. all right. And now, gotta ask you who's been our player of the season? Player of the season. I would have to see William Saliba. Ooh, that's a good one. Definitely. That is a good one, man. Definitely. Hopefully you know, I think it's... A, 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 my my pick is going to be different, and yeah. I think it's a lot harder to give an argument for yours. Okay. But I'm, I'm going to have to give it to Rice, bro. Ah, Don't get me wrong. Enough. Yours is, yours is good. Uh, to be honest, you yeah, might just yeah, be changing yeah. my mind on it. Ah. Odegaard also comes within with that shout too. I think Odegaard's been fantastic. Odegaard as well. Odegaard is close enough to Silva, definitely. But Odegaard has been phenomenal this season. I I don't yeah. think our uh, Arsenal, the, uh, like Arteta, I don't think anything functions without Odegaard. And true, I think he's That's reluctant true. to take out Odegaard at times because of that too. Yeah, and Odegaard, man, I don't know how he does it, but I'm sure by Sunday. He needs to just stay home and just stay home and don't go nowhere. <laughs> he needs a sleep, man. He needs a sleep, a long sleep. Because boy, he has been at it from the season start. He's played every game, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would also like to give a shout out to Gabriel Magalhães. Definitely. You know, Saliba's partner in crime. I don't think he's put Definitely. much of a foot wrong either. He hasn't. And 
to be honest, his performances get overshadowed by Sidibo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you watch the I've... games, the better small details in it, um, when players are celebrated, he's like, get back, get back, keep composure. We have to keep composure. We have to, you know, concentrate and win the game. Like, it's like that. I even saw when Sidibo was going up to celebrate with the guy, it's like, get back, get back. Hmm, where are you going? Stay back, I'm going to defend. So, it is a few details that, that people miss out about him. Yeah. I think there's like a good yin and yang with Saliba and Gabriel to where they complement each other to where uh, Saliba is yeah. like that controlled guy, right? Yeah. You know, he's very calm. He has a he has a very delicate touch. You know, people call him yeah. the Rolls Royce defender. Rolls-Royce, whereas like Gabriel yeah. Yeah, you know he has a Bra- he has that little Brazilian nature to him, but at the same time, mm-hmm. to be hot headed, he's he, he's rough. He's, true, he's a yeah. big man too. He's tough. He's yeah. you know he's tough to get around. Mm-hmm. And when they go up for mm-hmm. corners, man, yo, it is them too. Yeah, Rice is yeah. in there. Yo, that is that is, that it, is it, a crazy. It's, it's good, good luck that, to that. It's good to have a physical presence again. I love it. Yeah, I really love it. Yeah, really we. Do. We got that steel to us now. We got that little bit of fight, that yeah, grit. And yeah, 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 yeah. Gabriel def- definitely... Ah, go- Here, here's the thing. In the beginning of the season, too, right? Remember, uh, he w- he didn't mm. start those first three games. Right. It was the games that, like... Yeah. Uh, party I, was I just don't understand why right, Arteta but... was... Yeah, it, he was starting... I, I think he was starting Kivior over them. I'm I like Kivior, sure. but I don't think he's ready. Yeah, I'm not sure why he was experimenting. That was so annoying. I no, was so annoyed. Of and that. then you heard rumors of Gabriel wanting to leave. Uh, other parties were yeah. interested. Thank God he, he had, stayed. He had to post on Instagram that like, "Yo, I'm here to stay." <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'll tell you what, if he, you know, if it was another match or two where he didn't start, it could mm-hmm. have been. It could have been bad. Yeah, the way we could, might have, have lost been him. that Arteta was too stubborn to not change anything, but I need to change. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I want to give out. I want to give two more shout outs. One is mm. to David Ray again. Uh, you know, as much as the controversy that there was to him uh, yeah, in the beginning part yeah. of the season. Yeah. Now, mm. And a lot of his clean sheets, too, obviously, they're on the defense. Right. You yeah. know, mm. they, there was always the stat with Man United with the most shots allowed. Mm-hmm. We, were, uh, we were the least shots allowed. And that's okay. been part of the defense. And then with Ray also coming up with some clutch saves here and there. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, yeah, there's Raya. And then the last one, I'm going to... Oh, yeah, actually, it was actually three, I lied. Three, yeah. Uh, our star boy, Sokka. Yeah. There I seems always, to be a bit I of a, a tail end, uh, you know, where he, like, he just, like, runs out of juice, it seems like. Yeah, remember right? it feels that, that way? he has been playing... He's, he has been playing nonstop since he was 17. Since he was 17. He has played more than 250 games. Which is insane. He's burning out right now. We can't. We can't afford to let him burn out more. Now, I I do think we do need a proper backup for him. Yeah, um, we do. We do. But I'll tell you what. He he's a hell of a player for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I he does put in a shift and he does help out a lot defensively too. He does. He you does. know, there's always yeah. going to be haters on him. There's always people going to say, "Oh, Cole Palmer's better," or "Foden's better." Yeah. I'll tell you what, Palmer is starting over him on that right wing. No, not for sure. Nah. Give Saka a little bit of time to rest up. I, you'll see the better Saka in this Euros. I think this is his Definitely. tournament to shine. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. And then I also want to give one more shout-out to Leo Trossard. Yeah, he deserved that. He deserved that so much. Oh, my God. You know, he's been patient, man. And, you know, now that... He paid off. He paid off. Yeah. Man, he's so good. He's so good. The guy is technical. And, like, even with Martinelli, there was always grumblings of us signing another left wing in his replacement. Yeah. I don't know if you could say that about Trussard, though. Man, nah, you have to stay. He has been such a good deal. I really appreciate him, man. He's... He's doing a good job. Yeah. He's been great. And then, last but not least... Mm-hmm. Well, he's not a player. Super Mikarteta. Yeah. Hmm. Man, there's so much things behind him right now. People do not like him or or they like him, but to me... Is there something about him you don't like? Or not don't like criticisms? He's too stubborn. That's yes. All. Yes. And he knows what is right, but he, doesn't, he just doesn't do it. 
and he wants to be do something which is wrong just to say that he is right, if that makes sense. I don't know. I get what but you're saying. That 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 is him. That is him and it's annoying. Just like earlier this season, he plays party in right back and he's not listening to nobody. He's, just, <sighs> he's not listening to nobody. And he does it again the next game and he's not changing, but he had to change because performances are getting worse. He's like, you know what? I'm going to change it. And he did. Mm-hmm. Well, Unless I'm not, he's a good coach so far. I, I think he's a fantastic coach. He has some really good ideas of like, yeah, he learned a lot on his city side of things. Uh, I'm pretty sure he learned a lot on their pep. But the way th- the interchange of players, the overload on certain sides. Right, um, yeah. At first, I was against mm-hmm. spreading the width. I'm like, why do we need to be so far apart from each other? But mm-hmm. not, it's not that they're far apart for, uh, you know, you know, just to open us to stretch the defenders. But mm-hmm. they overload certain sides of the area too to interchange, right. to unlock that side, to uh, then to cross it over or... To, you know, to bring it back, to keep the ball. There's so mm. many positives to it that I'm learning as well. I understand. And I understand. My one credit, or one of my criticisms would be is he's going to try new things, right? Like the Smith throw in the false nine position. That didn't Yeah, happen. he's going to, yeah, 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 yeah. You mentioned the Kai have, uh, um, Thomas Partey in right back. Obviously, that didn't work. He, he, I don't know if he was joking or if it was bullish from him in the beginning of a season about, Ramsdale coming in for David Ryan in the middle of the game. I don't know. Yeah, yeah no. That, thank God that never happened. We don't want goalies subbing out in the middle of the game. Fuck that. True, 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 true. <laughs> Kai Havertz in midfield. That's another failed experiment. But guess yeah, what? It, it, was, it, it was. failed. Failed against the better teams, right? It worked against the lesser teams. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's, cool. that's true. That's true. That's true. Um, and then his other main thing is sometimes he stalls a lot on his substitutions. Wow, when, especially you. when you see that the game isn't just like working out, he's man. so reluctant to change it up. Yeah, he needs to fix himself on that man. Oh my god! He I think that's just the fan so... in us. Maybe he, again, they're professionals. They know what they're doing. Maybe they're trying to. I can't put you know a pin on it, but I, I hmm. think he knows that if they let it play it out, some, maybe potentially something. I don't know if that. I don't think that's how it works, but. Mm-hmm. He has his reasons, right? And I guess so. I guess so, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, listen, when he first started this, he started it with, what, two successive eighth-place finishes. Yeah. And there yeah, was that yeah. fifth-place finish. We were just, we were close to the Champions League playoff, uh, mm-hmm. play, uh, playoff spot. Mm-hmm. All right, we didn't get it. Then, then the next season, we're challenging for the time. We're in the lead. Okay, we bottled it to City, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, we had to leave out. That's my one excuse, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then now this season we're going toe with toe to uh, with City in the final day. I honestly, mm-hmm. Arteta, you're here to stay. All right. I got no enough. qualms with that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One thing I do also want to wish as well is I hope he experiments mm-hmm. a little bit more mm-hmm. with you know how we always set up in a four three three. Yeah. I would love to see it how if you could do like a three five two kind of thing or. Oh. You know, take the body away from, you know, from defense up to midfield. Not necessarily in the transition from, hey, move Ben White here to here. No. Mm-hmm. Is start with three center backs. Because we got That's center backs, five. you know, they're good on their own. Yeah, and they're really good on the ball. And they're quite fast. So I can, so I can, I can imagine. I can imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. Mind you, yeah, we're going to be suspect on tr- uh, teams that are on transition. Yeah. Mm. Three at the back, you're always going to be suspect to that. But... Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, with, yeah. if we reinforce and maybe we need another striker or another solid, you know, ball playing midfielder or creative midfielder like Odegaard, right? That's where we add that extra body, and uh, you know, that's food for thought there. But that's something I would love to see him, you know, engineer a little bit ex- is maybe another formation or another style of play. Probably, I would just have to see next season see what he does. Hmm. Any other takeaways from the season, man? Um, honestly, I, I think you have exhausted the list of what we will discuss for this season. Um, the only thing I can say is that I hope next season we can win it, win the title for sure. Um, we just need a proper recruitment and the right mentality and just win our games and we should be fine, hopefully. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And then I got one. 
I got one more for you. Mm-hmm. If Arsenal wins this, uh, the league on Sunday, what's your drink of choice? Drink of choice. Yeah, what 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 what, what, what are you taking that? What, what are we celebrating with here? Boy, hmm, it has to be something expensive. Ooh, okay, pro, pricey. I, I, I was just gonna take my it. friend's beer and chug that down because he, he ain't gonna need it, I'll or throw it up in the air like the English, you know. Okay, I, I'll I'll go with the beer instead. I'll go with the beer instead. I'll go with the beer. All uh, right, probably like a like a. A hand king or something. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, now, if yeah. we lose, what do you, what, what are we, uh, you know, drinking our sorrows to? <laughs> I'm going. I'm going to bed. <laughs> I'm going to bed and cry. <laughs> uh, no, no, don't cry. Listen, eighty nine point second place. It's nothing to cry about, man. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> that's all true. right, Javier, man. <laughs> yeah. This is a good episode. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to hear about the Chelsea boys and their Chelsea podcast. Yeah, and then also we got to do an end of the season review, f- you know, for the whole of the Premier League, Champions League yeah. as well, finals coming up as well. So, and there's mm-hmm. the FA Cup final. No one cares about mm-hmm. that. But, definitely, definitely. Uh, I'm Ryan with the Final Whistle Podcast. Javier. Yeah, we know we're out. Peace. Later, guys. Mm-hmm.